All right, here we go, overdrive, off and running, TSN 1050 on the TSN app, your home smart speaker, and up on TSN 4, a total eclipse of the heart. We're playing all the hits today. Brian Hayes, the O-Dog, Jeff O'Neill, Jamie Noodles, McLennan. How was your eclipse experience? I honestly think it's the dumbest I thing. I, like, I didn't even... It you guys are I, losers, man. You got to get out there with the glasses. <laughs> I was in Target. The sun. I forgot about it. <laughs> How do you forget about it? It's the only I thing went, going on in the world right now. It's like, remember Die Hard 3? What are you taking kids, away from it, Hayes? What are you getting from it? Like, what? what? It's different. I don't know. It's a little bit darker in the afternoon. People are, you know, discussing their totality of the eclipse, because which is going to get really annoying because you're going to get that in the future. Did you have 100% or 99% to- totality? Um, listen, out by me, it was cloudy. It sucked. I'll be perfectly honest. We had all the goofy glasses. No one so saw anything. you didn't anything. see anything. It was terrible. It was a complete bust. But my understanding is in Hamilton and Niagara Falls, beautiful, sunny, total eclipse, wild scene. So... You guys are losers, That's man. No, I'm not you doing can't that. Be a I'm part not of a cl- society. You're, you're Mr. <laughs> society. You're Mr. Stop and Chat. Dude, I, hey, I got to tell you, I went down to the morning skate to do some prep for the show. Never saw any of any you guys there. That's fine. No, Mark Masters was down there. I saw it with some hockey people. First ten minutes of the convo about the eclipse, and I just said, "What are we doing here?" Thank you. What are we doing here? Were they engaged? Like, were they interested? Was it a Wikipedia search before they? There the was chat knowledge so coming up, or what? There was knowledge coming out of them that I didn't know that they would be interested. But they were, I don't know. They might have peeked their heads out of their offices and had a look today. I don't know. I don't know. But I have no interest. I, I was busy. I, I'm running around. I got errands. I'm not looking up at the sun with glasses. I'm not doing it. I, I forgot what time it what what actual time was it did it happen? Yeah, come on. No, I'm not doing it. So I I was so I wasn't that long ago. I I don't I'm like you're acting at how am I supposed to be at morning skate when I'm traveling? Like I I'm calling a game tomorrow. So I'm You're talking about morning uh, skate or the in, eclipse. In Florida. Which what are you talking about? The eclipse no, of the o, morning o's, skate. Yeah, but O's saying I was at morning or was O's like I'm at morning skate, didn't see you guys there. How the hell am I supposed to be at morning skate this morning? Exactly. So that's first of all, that's where I'm gonna I'm gonna come back at. And then secondly, um the the eclipse, like I read on twi- Twitter, Matt Cause was tweeting out saying it's gonna be cloud cover, so don't even bother. So I was like, All right, don't that's even bother. I attitude. forgot I was in a different city. So I'm bombing along and I I was in Target. And I forgot, like, people were talking. I heard a rumbling about it, but, like, what? the last time I remember, I was in grade two or three, there was an eclipse. And my neighbor was out mowing his lawn, and he stopped and was looking up. And I remember banging on the window going, don't look up. But my neighbor was known as the crazy neighbor. Well, how many, yeah, how many, guy, how many people are watching CP24 saying you got to have the glasses to look up, and they just looked up without the glasses? Well, people are going to do that anyway. I mean, that's why all the school boards were shut down today. Like, my kids haven't had a full right. week in months. Partially our own doing. Oh, we they won't to, either. Well, we went yeah, to Florida they're... before March break, you know, so we took them out for a few days uh, before and a couple days after, and then there was, you know, the four-day weeks around – Easter and now the moon is jamming us up. The moon is is jamming up what people are doing during the day, but it's obviously for the betterment of the kids. All that I understood the messaging and and what we're talking about right now. You don't want right. if it was going to be that dark, kids walking home, but it wasn't. It wasn't that dark at all. But also right. the idea that they're going to look up safety first. I, I'm all for that. But um, well, yeah, we, we we had a PA day because of the eclipse, and it kind of came and went around me because it was pretty cloudy. And everyone just kind of wore goofy glasses for nothing. Well, I've got one question. Is it? Is there like somebody, is there verified that if you look up there, it burns your eyes or something like that? Like, has, do you know anybody or is there stories of like somebody who was staring into it and burned their eyes out? No, it's, a wives, it's a an fable? old wives tale. I mean, it's if you stare at the sun. <laughs> old <long>. wives tale. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's, basic. it's made up. It's made up. It's yeah, not, people are going to come after you if they burn no, no, their no. eyes out. They're going to be like, I listened to this guy on overdrive and he said, go nuts. What I mean by that is <laughs> well, <laughs> that obviously if you stare at the sun long enough, you're going to have damage to your eyes that that applies during right. an eclipse. it's not a different sun because it's an eclipse the concern is people are just going to stare at it for an hour yeah you know and your retinas are going to start to burn off yeah from that standpoint yes it's not an old wives tale but the idea that you look up once and you're blind i don't believe that's the case because i just did it 40 times 
you know, I was looking up yeah. and trying to figure out what was going on, but it was cloudy out by me. You couldn't even see anything. So, and listen, if you're, li- if you're listening to us for medical advice, that's your first problem. Yes, you know. exactly. Big time problem. <laughs> yeah, we're not the ones that are going to supply that for you. But uh, it is a big day in the city. We got the home opener for the Jays with Seattle Oof. in town. And whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. yeah. The, and I was wondering about the timing. They must have, this, usually the home opener is a, you know, four o'clock first pitch. Three o'clock first pitch. I would guess that was eclipse related. I don't know. I I probably should have looked into that, but I assume that that was somewhat eclipse related. Like they know it's coming. Make sure it's a, a later start. Start. But it'll be a packed house tonight. You know, everyone's doing the rounds, talking about how cool the renovations are, and they do look amazing. And they pumped a lot of money into it. I'm sure it's going to be a cool experience for people that are lucky enough to be there. But much like the leaves, and that's where it's going, right? Like the the 100 level. That is so exclusive now down at the Rogers Center. Those seats right behind them, the padded seats where they've really isolated behind home plate like Yankee Stadium, like you see in a lot of these modern right. parks, those are going to cost so much. They're going to be so tough to find. They're going to be corporate seats. They're, they're building, I, I believe, like restaurants and stuff underneath for people to go to. So there's going to be innings where people are not even in their seats. They're going to be down below partying and drinking wine and eating right. sushi, which is their own right. But there's always been a divide with the Leafs, with the Raptors, now with the Blue Jays. Like, what do I care if I'm Joe Fan about the renovations in the 100 level if I'm not going to the game anyway? You yeah. know, like, or I if want, I do, I I'm going to be out in the outfield and I'm getting gooned and right. I want to catch a fly ball. So that basically means nothing to right. me. Yeah, and I'm not downplaying why they did it. Obviously, it's going to be amazing. By all accounts, it looks great. I mean, this isn't a shot at the Blue Jays for doing it. It just It's a very small percentage of people that are ever going to experience this latest round of renovations, and I think it's falling flat this year compared to last year where people were really buzzing about getting down there, You know, really wanted to see what was new and how the vibe was going to change, uh, and I don't anticipate that will be the case this year, and furthermore, they're coming in. They're four and six, which really isn't a brew. That's not a bad start. Like it's not it's great, not. but it's not awful. Four and six is not terrible. Yet, you know, the bats are what they are. There's some frustration. Gosman got lit up over the weekend. It's a weird mojo. It's a it's not, weird yeah. marketing. Campaign and hopefully, for a they can get tonight. that that mojo back and kind of marry some offense. Because that was the big thing after last year, Hayes. You you said it. Everyone knew it. Everyone said it. It's like they have to fix this offense because either internally with the stars they have, they're big bats with Vladdy and Bo, and guys got to start hitting, and you hope that that can happen for this home opener and moving on forward at home because the marriage of the business side of putting this all together as far as the ballpark and watching guys dribble little wounded ducks out to second base is not going to be a fun experience. Everyone's going to be like, what the hell is this? Mm -hmm. So hopefully they can put it together offensively because they're going to have a bunch of fired up people and they want something to watch. Absolutely. You come home and you got, yeah, you come home, you get everybody excited about it. Four and six isn't great. It's just Randy Carlisle. It's okay. Just okay. Mm -hmm. But you've been on the road. You played some tough teams you know, it's a lot better than Alec Manoa throwing Oof. like uh, that's this guy. That's man. really scary, man. Oh man! I, yeah, I, and he I'm said after guys, he thought I'm it concerned. was good. He he was like, I don't care about the numbers. I felt good and I was doing things I wanted to do. That's that's weird. Yeah, talk. I mean, he's he. I think is in a position where he feels like he has to say that. You know, like I'm I'm guessing it's psychological in many ways, and you know, Manoa is trying to build himself up and get to a point where he feels like mentally he can perform again but if you're not familiar Manoa pitched in a single a Dunedin rehab start yesterday he went one and two thirds innings pitched he gave up five hits six earned runs and four walks that's against a single a team in Dunedin and I believe he walked the first three batters he faced I'm pretty sure the first pitch he threw was like a cricket pitch it landed like three feet before the plate I'm not kidding (laughs) Worm burner. Laughing. Like, that's a le- not legit good. worm it's burner. A- like that's how ugly it is, man. And and it's gonna get to a point where he can't be on the forty man roster anymore. Like he's not gonna be a part of the future. You can't just say, well, stay down in single A for the next two years to try to figure it out. Like at some point they're gonna have to make a decision on him. It's not gonna happen today. It won't happen in the next week, probably not in the next month. You know, you're gonna give him more starts and hope he builds up. 
but it, it could not have been worse. Uh, I, I guess it could have been in the complex league last year, but it could it, it could not have been right. today in terms of what he did or over the weekend uh, down in Dunedin. So Keegan Matheson will join us on that and, and the home opener tonight a little bit later in the hour. Keegan's been down at the park and he'll give us an update on what the new digs look like, you know, at this point. And, uh, oh, you said you're down at morning skate. Sid's in town. The Pens are in town. They're causing quite a buzz, you know, is How's everyone feeling down there? Everyone excited for the game tonight or what? I'll tell you what. Sometimes when you go down to morning skate, like maybe in February or March, it's just like let's get – it's just protocol, like morning skate. But it's got a good little vibe to it. Bunch of media down there. The Pens are in town. Massive game for the Penguins. Like there's some teams losing around them. Craig was mentioning on SportsCenter last night. It's like that's – they're doing great, but other teams are saying, go ahead, Pitt, get in there. Yeah. But watching the Leafs, Nobody's I don't know, it. maybe I was kind of overthinking it because I just look at little things and just how things are moving and looking. The Leafs look, they got a bit of a different look to them from the other times I've been down there. They kind of, they definitely up close, they look bigger to me. And guys like Holmberg and Nyes, and I don't know, they just, they got a different look to them. It's just, hopefully they can kind of continue after that game on Saturday and, and building towards the playoffs. But they just, they got a bit of a different feel. And I talked to a bunch of people because we all get asked the Leafs question, what about the Leafs, what are they going to do? And a lot of people say the same thing, even some people in our building we work at where it's a different look and some players are different. Some people think Matthews is different. Like, it just got a different vibe and hopefully the playoffs come in with different results because they do have a different look to them. Yeah, I, I would concur with that. I like the way they're they're playing. I like the mojo that they have. I mean, what stops, I think, everyone consistently throughout Leaf Nation is their history. You can't yes. change it, you know. And it, I right. think what you get with Leaf fans, um, and I, I would fall in this camp, is I'm always cautious to jump into, wow, it's totally different. Wow, I love where they're at because no. I felt hey, that see, way. Hey, by again. the way, I'm not saying it's totally different. I'm saying as of right now, there's just a different look, a different energy, and yeah. things look a little bit different. That but was that my is only different. observation. No, that is, but that's what I'm saying. Right. I agree with you. It does feel totally different. Will it matter and be totally different is the separate conversation that I'm getting to, but I like where they're at. Like you look at their their numbers since the beginning of January, you take their history out of it. You take who they are. You just look at them and say, "This team has won this many games. They've got this type of players. They would be a team that a lot of people would say that team can win." Like absolutely. How different are they when you look at the way they've been playing and winning and the mojo they they have right now? The guys that are rocking on this team. Mm-hmm. They went through a spurt there where there were a lot of guys who were hurt, like prominent players that were hurt, and now they're coming back into the lineup. If you, it's the history that stops people, I think. You know, I, and I understand you can look at their defense, and it's not perfect by any means. Samsonov in net, he he can't be. He's not the equivalent of Hellebach or Shosturkin. I I get that, but they got a good team. They've been good for a long time. They're playing tough. They're playing with energy. They seem to have some camaraderie, and they're peaking i think at the right time so you check off those boxes okay you know that that should be means for some confidence going into the playoffs it's on them to to prove that ultimately that's exactly what we're seeing right now and it's going to pay off in the playoffs and i like the line setup from saturday night having that depth who knows how long it'll stay together because i think sheldon keith is you know, he's prone to kind of just mixing it up if there's not a good period or shaking it up, and we'll see how that translates. The one transition for me anyway is when they were having stretches of just kind of throwing it out there and they were kind of winning some bad game, like winning 7-4, or I think everybody thought if this team plays Florida in the first round, they get dummied. And I know, Hayes, you mentioned last week, and it's very noticeable that Florida's taken a bit of a stumble. But if Toronto can have that depth up front and get that goaltending and their decor can hold it together back there, I've moved away from saying that Florida would crush them in a series starting right now. I've moved away from that, so that's something different for me. Because I think a month and a half ago, the way Florida was playing, and Toronto would, you know, they're just giving up goals and question marks and net. You're thinking, that won't be a very long series. And I've kind of shifted. And by the way, whatever we think of our thoughts about a series doesn't matter squat, but I've kind of gone away from they'll get crushed by Florida right now. I'll tell you that. 
Yeah, I don't. I don't see it. I, I didn't see it that way. I mean, Toronto's a very good team. Florida's a very good team. Boston's a very good team. Like, regardless of who they play, they're a very good team. But they're going to be playing a very good team. Like you, you look throughout the playoffs and and you look throughout the league right now. There is easily, you know, I think there is a ten to twelve pack that could. You could make a case for every oh, one of those teams interesting. involved. Interesting, a twelve pack. Is that what you guys well, think? We'll see. <laughs> it is hard, but I mean, it's like your guys in the in the Masters. Are you going to have th- thirty-five picks each, or are we just going to narrow it down to five or six? Like, well, I'm glad you brought that up because, field? yeah, we we are going to unveil noodles, and I don't even know how it got to a point where it was just noodles and I doing this, but we're doing it today at six. I don't know. We're going to do our our cup list, most likely to win the cup, and there's a lot of different things that have to come into that, um, but. Much like our Masters picks, and oh, Noodles brings up a good point. Generally, it starts at three, then it goes to five, then it's seven, then it's nine with a Canadian, then it's hey, mixing a live guy. But you so- know what our idea was for the Masters <laughs> this year? I like the idea of a trivia question. Whoever gets it gets a two-pack. That's how you get to the Masters picks. Okay. Yeah, we can, we can definitely cool. look into that. Um, yeah, we got a lot of time to do it. We're going to do our picks, obviously, on Wednesday. But Noodles and I are going to unveil our – Top twelve for the cup this year. All right, one through twelve. Yeah, and well, it's, it's just tough, a ranking man. system. So is really. that basically a? a is it a top ten with basically two honorable mentions on the back end? Well, of it? You, is, you could say it's a top five with seven honorable mentions too. You know, okay. depending right. on which way you want to phrase it. But I have mine yeah. listed one through twelve. And what I will say is, when I was doing it, it did really bring to light what I think we've known for quite some time and we've been talking about for quite some time. There are so many teams that can win, you know, and sure, I like certain teams more than others. (laughs) Yeah, no, I understand. But that obviously gets back to what we're saying with the Leafs, where it's like with the Leafs, uh, and I understand why non-Leaf fans would think this. I understand why pessimistic Leaf fans would think this. Ah, it's not going to be them because they're the Leafs, you know, and that's all, ah, they can't do it because it's them. And they got to own that reputation. You know, they, they, their history is what it is. Yeah. But when you, you take that history away and you just look at the way they're built, they can beat anybody. And Florida can beat anybody. And I think the Rangers and Carolina and Dallas and Edmonton, like there are 10 to 12 Colorado. teams legitimately. Yeah, you can look at it and say that team could absolutely win a series or win four and go all the way to a Stanley Cup. So it's going to be a, a fun night tonight with Sid in town because I will give them full credit. They have completely flipped the script. Like, they have gone on a run here that has been incredible, and they basically have to win out. You know, they, they pretty much have to win out because you're fighting with the Islanders. The Flyers are a mess now, and Tortorella has no idea what to do <laughs> because they're just losing every night. And they're losing to terrible teams, too. Their schedule has been so soft. Dude, they're getting they're losing dummied the worst by teams in the Buff league. and Columbus. Yeah. Scary stuff. Yeah, they're they're fading quickly, and the Capitals are throwing points away like they did yesterday. Um, so yeah, it's it's really a crawl to the finish line for someone who's going to finish third in the Metro and whoever's going to be the second wild card. But we will have that answer by likely this time next week, if not a week and a half from now. So we well, got I a think big it one might today. Come down. Yeah, it might come down to the last game of the season. It legitimately might come down to the last game of the season. Now Washington plays Detroit this, I believe, tomorrow. Like there, there's some head-to-head games here, and you're right. Washington pissed one away last night. They were up two-one with seven minutes left. They lose in overtime. But you know, Phillies hit the ditch. Now they're on the outside looking in. But let's let's not forget, there's two spots up for grabs because that third in the Metro is not cemented. Yes, the Islanders have 85, but mm-hmm. you know, Pitt. Sid just continues to, again, I don't, you know, Johnny, oh, you weren't on the show, but Johnny chewed my face off on Friday uh-oh, when uh-oh. I suggested. <laughs> it was funny, though. We, we, we were joking. It was, it was, but I, I said, man, would you, would you look at Sid at maybe number five for the heart? Like just kind of s- sniffing if, if, if Pittsburgh makes it. I just made a, su- a suggestion, you know, and, and Johnny, was like, what about Panarin? And, and he made a legitimate point. There's probably five or six guys maybe ahead of Sid, but Sid has been, you know, single-handedly, I think. Now Geno's played well, but they, he's dragged that team into – they're on the cusp right yeah, there. Yeah, they're right so, there, man. Dude, that guy is so good. I, I was down at the morning skate. I brought a friend – I brought the life coach down there, and I told them they were just doing a simple neutral zone, like four – 
four blue line neutral zone stuff. And I said, there's 87 right there. I said, watch how good this guy is. Puck handling, moving, and he's he's just so brilliant. The guy's a legend, man. Like, yeah, he is. Like that's that's God, what he represents, good. man. He's yeah. he's so good. I think he what has he got six goals and like fifteen points in his last six games. I think. Like I thought yeah. I read that this morning. Um, yeah, he's on fire. You know they were on fire against Tampa. That was a great game over the weekend where they find a way to win that. Um, and yeah, they still need some help because they dug themselves such a deep hole earlier in the year, but. Like Nedeljkovic has been huge. He's been playing, right? It's been him. What a surprise of that is! Man. That is significant. And that was a Dubas guy. Like I remember when he brought him in, I was like, "Really? Like he's kind of jumped around." Carolina, Detroit. Who do you think he's going to bring? And obviously, it's worked out well. Bunting's worked out really well. Like Bunting has performed well since that trade. And you know they yeah. they need one tonight. And I think you're going to see Sid certainly. Uh, come out flying tonight. So we'll see what the Leafs have in store because the Leafs are obviously playing for something too where Tampa's behind them and Tampa's got a really soft sked, like really soft the rest of the way. Um, and the Leafs still play Tampa again next next week. So it still could come down to that final game against Tampa to see, you know, jockeying of positions. But Matthew's got 64 goals. He's hit 100 points. Willie's four points away from 100. You know, there's there's a lot on the line here for both teams. So we'll tee that up throughout the afternoon. Chris Johnston coming up just after 5 o'clock. Noodles and I will be unveiling our 12-pack. 1 through 12, very significant, very detailed. 1 through 12, 12 for our <laughs> cup favorites. Um, and Keegan Matheson coming up from the Dome ahead of the home opener tonight. We'll get his breakdown of what he thinks of the new digs down at the park, and mm-hmm. what does he make of the, the Jays through 10 games? Maybe he'll like what I brought for you guys, what I'm bringing, because after the break, before we get to Keegan, I'm bringing you guys a food treat, and I'll, I hope you like it. Okay, I'm intrigued by that. Ooh. We'll see what that is, and maybe Keegan will be intrigued himself. So Keegan Matheson coming up. Overdrive continues, TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. Always thinking about the crew? Doogie, JP, Noodles, and Hayes. And on my travels on the way home, I stopped in Stainer, Ontario. And I got everybody from the crew some pickled beets. What do you think? Are you guys fans? I'm an aficionado. So, I don't want you to be setting us up here. You're not giving someone a plug or something, and I'm going to bury this, right? Or I'm not. I'm not. I just like found a place. Stuff because if you if this is like you know your cousin's place, and I got to no, be careful. No, it's not, guys. Okay. I've had to eat salads, right? And I love beets, and I found the best pl- place for beets, and I got you guys a can. And if you're going to be ignorant, say you don't like beets, I'll keep. I'm not a fan personally. No, I, I want you to have. Mine. I don't eat beets. I want yeah, you to I have mean, mine, I, and I'd love, I'd I love for you beets, to have yeah. mine. <laughs> I'd but be honored like, if like, you had mine. <laughs> so but you're I, telling my, me you guys don't enjoy pickled beets? Absolutely beets. not. I find beets remarkably <laughs> repulsive. I don't like the look, the vibe, the texture, anything about it. And you add a pickled element to it, that puts it into a completely different stratosphere. No way. But I'd no like way. you to have Keep mine. Well, honest. these are the best in Ontario. So if anybody sure wants them, are, right? right on the main Dragon Stainers wow. at Jamie's place. I found them. Me and wow. my cousin, we go on. Right. We do old man stuff. Yeah. We look for yeah. places, little farm towns with beets, and these are the best ones. Okay. Dead okay. stills. Well, Thank you. Darlene, Darlene McLennan will take them because she makes a mean borscht. Let me guess. And you know, It's not up. a piece of chicken breast and some rice, or you don't like it. Like I, I, Listen, I knew I, I should have just said I should have kept it to myself. Okay, my family is, is, my mom's side is Ukrainian, so I used to walk into the house, and it would reek of borscht, it would reek of um, pierogies, cabbage rolls, all of that type of stuff. I did not care for the borscht, and, and I don't love beets, I apologize, but I'm sure they're fantastic, and if I got, I was lucky enough to get a jar of them, somebody in my family would eat them, I okay. promise you. There okay. you go. Noodles. If I was lucky enough, I would be. I, I bet you be Keegan, being an like an Islander, he loves them. He loves them. He's not an Islander. He's from Nova Scotia. He's from Toronto, isn't he? Isn't no. that considered an Islander? Like a no. dude, you're an idiot. Don't try to embarrass me. It's an Islander if you're from out east. It's not that you're. That's so ignorant. You think anything probably east of Quebec City is an island? I do. <laughs> I. <laughs> If you're from out east, you're an islander. That's you're... what they call themselves out there. <laughs> All right. So if you're from Kingston, that's you're tough. an other no. forget, forget. That's a thousand islands. That's a thousand islands. I'm talking PEI. 
Newfoundland, all those places Saint out there. John's. Yeah, yeah Rock, you're an yes. Islander. <laughs> you're an ask Islander. him. <laughs> okay, we'll ask him. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I don't recall Nova Scotia being considered – you know, an island the way Could Prince I, Edward Island dude, is. Dude, it's not say, the – you're, you're saying it wrong. It's not an island. It's just out east. They're islanders. They're islanders. They're, okay. Well, yeah. again, I'm not familiar with that, but we'll catch up he with Keegan. He would love him, though. I, I would guess Keegan's Keegan would be insulted by that. I, I think Keegan would assume you know nothing about geography okay, hang on. in the Atlantic Okay, he provinces. just he's, – he's listening now. Tell him, ask him where he's from, and ask him, are you considered what I just said they were? All right. Here's Keegan Matheson of MLB.com. He's at the park. He's on the field for opening night tonight. But let's begin by asking about your background. All right, Keegan? Um, I love it. All right, pal. So answer this for us. Where are you from? And wherever that happens to be, I know where it is, but where that happens to be, have you ever been called or considered an islander based on where you're from? I am from the nation's greatest province of Nova Scotia, and I have not been called an islander, mainly due to the issue of it not being an island. <laughs> Thank you. That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. B- bit of a hiccup that it's not technically an island where you're from. I'm a resident of a large peninsula, I guess, but uh, no, I-, I can't claim PEI. I okay. have- I've been called a lot of things in my life, fellas, never an islander. Right. Oh, do you want to respond? I mean, did you really have to answer it like that, Keegan? I, I thought kind of the East Coasters were referred to as Islanders. Maritimers, we can do. Yeah. We can Maritimers. do Maritimers. Now, that excludes Newfoundlanders, which I hate because I love Newfoundlanders too. But uh, Maritimers, Atlantic Canadians, but uh, I love Islanders too. But they, they've still got nothing on Nova Scotia. <laughs> yeah. Okay. See, I figured, man. You, you know, you're doing us dirty here in Toronto, too, because people are watching <laughs> out there, and they're like, look at these scumbags in Toronto who think. Dude, I'll take the hit for that one, because I <laughs> thought everyone was referred to it like it's, an, like it's a term of endearment, Islanders. Is Sorry, it? Keegan. Yeah. yeah. What's so endearing hey, you know what? about that? Go ahead, Keegan. <laughs> I like it. This is, a, this is a, an awareness opportunity for us all. And as long as it's an endearing one, I'll it take certainly it. certainly is. <laughs> okay. I like right. to love speech as well. Not exist sometimes, guys. So I'll take Islander. All right. I like it. All right. You're an Islander, man. That's it. From here on out, uh, Keegan Matheson is an Islander. Um, let's see if you can be an interior decorator for us, or have the eye of that anyway, because hey. you're at the park and everyone's buzzing about you know these these new renovations. And uh, what do you what do you make of them? Give us your breakdown of how you feel about how the park's looking tonight. Well, fellas, I do watch a lot of HGTV in the off season, and uh, <laughs> the four hundred million dollar budget. I'm uh, I'm looking around for where it went. I know a lot of stuff is underground. Uh, the visual stuff you see behind the plate, one hundred level. There's a bit of that Yankee Stadium vibe where there's some sections chopped up. You see the concrete dividing. But the seats do look better. I'm just standing along them here. You've got cup holders. Everybody's happy. I think a lot of that money is showing a little more underground in some of those clubs that aren't quite completed yet. Uh, we got the first look at the clubhouse today, which is pretty impressive. It's LED screen, everything. It's going to be uh, quite the nightclub in there uh, after a win, I believe. So lots of player stuff. Um, the facilities are pretty impressive underground there. Uh, looking around, I mean, if you're a fan, yeah, there's going to be some more room to walk around. A little more room in the seat. You're a big person like myself, but uh, man, 400 milli is a lot of cash, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out, and interesting to see uh, if they can keep these fancy new seats filled. I guess. What about Happy? It seems like I can't really get a pulse on where the fans are with this team, Keegan. I bet if you asked everyone before that road trip started, if they came home four and six. That, that should be okay. That's pretty good for where they've been and the teams they're playing. It just seems like watching the offense and, I don't know, where do you think everyone's at watching their performance right now? Uh, tired. I, I get the sense a lot of people are tired. It's, yeah, of what? Six, it could have been worse, but of seeing a team that's doing a lot of the things they did last year. Yeah. And this feels like we're 172 games into the 2023 <laughs> season, not 10 games into last year. And it's a team that's doing a lot of similar things. And yeah, four and six, it could have been worse. But if you're a team like the Yankees or if you're a team like the Dodgers, you're saying four and six sucks. We need to be better. And I think that needs to be the standard around here. And a lot of the issues we saw on that opening road trip 
were with timely hitting. We're with an offense that was really good one night and then real, real quiet for two or three nights after. So after an offseason where we heard so much talk about changes, whether it be internal improvement, a different approach, hitting more home runs, hitting for more power, hitting for more damage, which is my new favorite word that means nothing in baseball, we haven't seen much of it yet. And I think until fans see something different, they're not going to react differently. And you want to make sure that apathy does not set in. You don't want people to get tired and bored of a ball club. This team is capable of being so exciting. They have the talent to not only be a good ball club, but win and play in a pretty exciting way. You think back to 2015 and 16, guys. A lot of people weren't here because the team played great baseball. They were here because the team was cool as hell. And they played with an edge that was so magnetic. And I don't think we've seen that from this team yet. It's been a lot of the same stuff we saw last year so far. With Keegan Matheson, MLB.com, and I, I think that might speak to you know, the edge, like you mentioned, where you look at a guy like Vladdy, who's not off to a good start. We know the statistics he's put up the last couple of years. And I, I am finding more and more fans are kind of turning on the nonchalant, you know, smile after a strikeout, shushing the crowd even though he does it all the time every home run but you're getting crushed type of you know maneuvers from Vladdy where you look at you know in 15 that's Batista who was snapping all the time Donaldson losing his mind constantly which I don't know if that's fair to Vladdy but you mentioned you were talking about the fan base and we're talking about the reaction to this team I do sense that you know there are a number of Blue Jay fans that look at Vladdy and they want to see a different attitude from him do you think that's possible? Do you think Vladdy's aware of it? Um, do you think it really matters to Vladdy? I think it's in there. I think a lot of guys express it differently, but Bautista and J.D. are the great examples, guys. Josh Donaldson just walked by us in the clubhouse. He, he's here for something. I'm not sure what, but he walked by us. Same haircut, black denim jean jacket. He still looked like if I looked at him the wrong way, he could knock me out in a second. That edge is important, and... What's at the core of this, guys, is people caring. Fans really, really care about this team. Open Twitter for five seconds. People really care. It's coming out as anger right now, and that's fine. That's understandable. But that's people caring. So people want to see that in return. Yeah, even if you go four and six in a road trip, but you really show that you're caring, that you're really in it as much as the fans are, that that helps this whole thing. And with Vladdy, I know there was the smile after the strikeout. There was the... The shush, which uh, people in New York didn't seem to like. He does it all the time. But yep. you, you want to see it show up in the big moments. That's what they were missing in New York, in Houston. Show up in those big moments. Have a moment. That's what J.D. and Bautista did so well. When they stepped up with the bases loaded two out, you knew they were going to do something. You knew they were going to be better than usual. They were going to be a better version of themselves. Right now, if a Blue Jays hitter steps up to the plate, bases loaded one out, you're probably watching for a double play. That's where your mind's at as a fan. You're just not expecting that knockout punch right now, and that's what's going to grab a fan base. It's those moments that aren't always home runs, but it's being timely and really, really giving a damn in the same way that fans do. With Keegan Matheson, MLB.com, Jays Mariners tonight, home opener down at the Dome, Barrios on the mound. Uh, Kevin Gosman, his first time out was really good. Uh, the fourth game down at the Trop, and then his second time out at Yankee Stadium, it really went south. He didn't even get through two innings. He got hit and hit hard. His velocity was in like the mid-80s. He chalked it up to just being cold and being off. He was speaking with the media afterwards, but he did have the injury issue in the spring. Um, What do you make of Gosman's start, where he's at, and, you know, how how much he's going to have to show us before, you know, we collectively kind of, breathe a sigh of relief uh, and not be overly concerned that this guy could have something going on here. Yeah, that initial radar stuff, guys, was a bit scary. Now, if I had have seen that from a younger pitcher, I'm really scared. You're, you're thinking, are we going to hear the word forearm or elbow tomorrow? Now, with Gosman, uh, he is, I, I wish I could be as relaxed as that man. My life would be a lot simpler. He said afterwards that he doesn't really look at velocity on the mound. He's, some days he's 88, some days he's 98. He feels it, he figures it out. But the only reason that it's not scary to me, guys, is that the exact same thing happened last year. Uh, same date, actually, April 6th. We were in Kansas City, 
And I think I only remember it because I asked a dumb question about it, and that kind of sticks in your brain. But Gosman had the same thing last year. Velo dipped four or five miles an hour. It was pretty nerve-wracking when it happened, but next start he jumped right back up to 95. He did that right through April and May, down, then up, and then down, and then up. So I'll wait until this next start. If the numbers are still down this next start, then you work. But I do expect them to bounce back because he's done it before. But, again, when you're talking about a shoulder on a guy who, again, threw a lot of innings last year, like a lot of these guys did, it's got to be on your radar. You, You look around baseball right now, guys, there's not a lot of good pitching news. Keegan, you don't do things in pro sports for optics. You're doing them for wins. Do you think whoever, I don't think we still don't know who's pulling the trigger on some of the decisions, but people were confused by the Schneider not playing the day after the dinger in Houston. Do you think any of that will change, like for a team that needs hits to kind of go off more of a feel, or it's just cemented how they pick their lineup and that's how they're going to do business, right or wrong? Yeah, I don't think it's going to change much. And frankly, I would like to see it change a bit. Now, I know that there are good matchups and bad matchups. I Mm -hmm. get it. You can't make every decision with your heart. But at a certain point, are you just splitting hairs? Are you only getting a few decimal points of a percentage? If it's Mm -hmm. close, you're allowed to follow your heart a little bit and reward those big days. Uh, There's a lot of veteran managers where if you hit a home run, I don't care if we're facing a guy you're 0 for a billion against. You're playing the next day. So there needs to be a bit of a balance there. Yes, matchups matter. But if it's close enough, you've got to reward these guys and also ride a hot hand. Ernie Clement is another one. We saw this early in the season in Tampa when he was making some plays, giving this team some energy when, my God, they needed some energy. Ride that wave. Show the other players that that's what gets rewarded. That's what this team is about. Clement and Schneider are good examples of that. Very similar guys. They're best buddies, roommates. They're great examples of that energy you need a bit more of. And in Schneider, he's an example of upside. He hits for power. You need that in there. And when you do it, uh, as long as it's possible with the matchups, I want to see that rewarded, guys. Keegan, where are you at with Alec Manoa? And how concerned are you that uh, about that start the other day that he's in a bad way and he might not make it back? The honest answer is that I have no idea where I'm at with Alec Manoa, and I don't know where you go from here, the Blue Jays. You can be as patient as you want. They're not going to cut the guy. They've got team control. They've got a guy who's been good. He'll get plenty of patience. But we're seeing this same thing play out over and over and over. Now, John Schneider said before the game that the good news is that he felt good. His shoulder felt fine, but that's supposed to happen. That's expected. That's, That's what it is. You need to see results. And I watched that game, guys, the single-A game yesterday when he was pitching. I think 16 of the first 18 pitches were balls. Not a lot of them were close, and every single delivery looked different. It, It did not look good. Yeah, there was some bad luck on the defense mixed in. You've got teenagers behind you, but it didn't look good. And they need to see this soon. This isn't just about Manoa getting healthy and getting back. He needs to win a job. Like, he needs to leapfrog a few people at this point, not just Bowden Francis, a few different people to get back onto this team. Like, I almost view him now as a top prospect trying to get back onto a team, not just get healthy. What's the uh, food situation for you tonight, Keegan, as a, as a journalist and an Islander? How wow. do you approach it tonight? <laughs> you know what, fellas? <laughs> it's looking improved. Maybe, uh, maybe 0.01% of the budget went to that. It's all about setting a tone on game one. You know, the chicken fingers, the dogs, the burgers, the pizza. That comes out in the sixth or seventh inning. And it's about setting routines, as people keep telling me in baseball. If I lean into that day one, am I going to lean into it all 81 home games? Where does that leave me? Where does that leave my life expectancy? We'll see. But uh, I'm going to try to stay out of the gutter tonight. But three hours from now, I might be a different man. What's one thing you got to bury tonight? Like, is it just, I know that, you know, there's old friends in there (laughs) food-wise. There's one thing you're saying, I'm taking it back to last year, and I got to get that one thing tonight. You know what, guys? I'm an old man who believes that carrot cake is an elite, God-level dessert. And there's usually some carrot cake out here. I know that's that's not a sexy answer, but when the carrot cake comes out, I lose it, and real quick. All right. 
All right, man. Updates. Keep us posted. I like that. Attack. Uh, yeah, catch and release, Keegan. Catch and release and pace yourself, buddy. It's game one of 81, like you said, at home. Thank you, buddy. We appreciate you doing this. All right. My fellow Islanders, take care. Yes. Shout out to the Islanders. Uh, everyone east Hi. of Dude, Oshawa is an on, Islander in the eyes of the I got to clarify. <laughs> I'm getting buried from people. Oh, yeah. Dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're like, yes, you are. you're the stupidest. One guy said you're the stupidest human being for saying that we're all Islanders. Uh -huh. I thought it was a term of endearment that everyone out east, Maritimers, Islander, I thought it was a thing. It's not a thing. It was my bad. And another thing, who did you put first on your greatest Leafs of all time? Hey, I put Doug Gilmore on mine. That's who's getting my beats because Killer – just said, I want the beats, please. Next time I'm heading downtown, I'll stop to pick them up. I okay. enjoy them very much. He can so have the mine. Great, can wow. he have my That's beats? what he's having. I want it to be gifted That's what he me texted to Doug me. Gilmore. Your favorite leaf of all time said, yeah. I'll take Hayes's. And Done. I said, you know what? Done. If it's good for the greatest leaf of all time, but it's not good enough for you. Well, that's hey, he's from east of here. He's an Islander. Doug Gilmore's an Islander, right? Dude, Kingston? I never said Kingston. <laughs> Anything east of Young no. Street, according to you. No. Is yes. No. Yes. I'm if talking you're in Leslieville, about I want the you're an beach. Islander. The Maritimes. Nova right. Scotia. PEI. Everything out there. What's the other one? There's <laughs> one, there's one New more province Finland. you haven't. Newfoundland named and Labrador. No, there's one more. <laughs> Give us one more. PEI. Yes. Newfoundland. Yes. Nova Scotia. Yes. New Brunswick. There you go. He's back. See, there you yeah. go. It's all good, man. You're, you JP, know what you're doing. JP, I will stuff five grand in your cool. jeans when I see Did you. Did he tell you New <laughs> oh, Brunswick? Hey, That's he sickening, had, JP. Dude, That's he, disgusting. I, I, I wouldn't have had it. Him. I wouldn't have had it. Well, My, why would I was do that for you? I don't know. I was he seizing. He phoned a friend. He phoned a friend. That's what he did. He was. This was, this was you got to phone a friend and JP got in his ear. JP, You would have rather PJ. seen my brain melt and, yes, and, and seize up on live television. You would have started saying Texas, no. uh, Arizona. <laughs> you would have started dropping states, man, before you got Dude, to New Brunswick. break, man. You were not hitting New Brunswick. Oh, no. I, I would have had a it, – it wasn't at the top of my head. I will say that. All right. Well. I, I okay. want the beats. Darlene McLennan, I'm taking them out to Edmonton. All right. She'll love them. You'll All right. Beats some. will go beats, out there. Beats. JP's getting beats, clearly. Yeah. Doogie wants beats. He's already yeah. saying he needs his beats. Uh, Doug Gilmore and Darlene McLennan. There it is. All right. <laughs> Everyone's getting yeah. beats. All right. <laughs> Home opener tonight. We'll continue to look ahead to that. Our best bets brought to you by FanDuel later in the hour. And Chris Johnston coming up with Sid in town. It's a big one. You got the national title game in college as well. It's going to be a fun night. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 4. All right. CJ coming up in about 15 minutes. Leafs pens tonight. Only two games in the NHL tonight, but we're getting closer to the playoffs, and there was a lot of activity over the weekend. We'll get into the game on Saturday night as well, which was a really fun game. And, you know, the Leafs are in a good place. The Jays are back home. Raptors have won two in a row. Your boy, Akshay Batia, is on his way to Augusta National. That is the goofiest blowing thing. his shoulder out. That's the goofiest finish I think I've ever seen, hands mm. down, to a PGA Tour event. That guy had an 85-yard lob wedge shot, and he called for a guy to bring out tape for his shoulder, I dude. Know. I know. After McCarthy had chunked into the water. Yes, that's when you walk up and say, I don't care if my arm falls off, I'm hitting this to 15 feet. Mark yeah. Kalkovecchia, who's an old-school golfer, if you're not aware, was losing it on Twitter, swearing at this guy, saying, what are you doing? I know. <laughs> I couldn't believe it either. I, I felt for McCarthy because... You know, he, shoot, he had eight birdies on the back. Eight. Shot 27 on the back and then folded the sod over. And he knew it the second he, he missed that, that. That's a flip wedge. He missed that by 35 yards. Oof. Underpants cam would have been massive at that point. <laughs> when, he, when his club face, if they could have got the cam ready to hit play as soon as the club face hit that ball, disaster. Because yeah. he knew it right away. He's like, that's just, uh, unfortunately, there's only one way to say that. He choked. Yeah, it's like a he, choke. Yeah, yeah it, exactly. It's nerves, yeah. man. He could hit He hit that shot 15 Dude, minutes earlier. Dude, he's hit that shot 70 million times in his life to yeah. five feet. Yeah. And he, 
He hit that 80-yard shot 60 yards. Yeah, he junked it badly. Like, he he, he wasn't even close. Like, it's so not then like I'm he like, bounced over and in. By the way, right the Taylor moment. made golf picks. I'm one for one. It, the official start was last week. Yep. And Akshay, but I don't know what you were doing, dude. To call for the tape guy was insane. You're crazy, and man. Crazy. He blew his shoulder out celebrating his birdie putt. All I can think of is that's how skinny that guy is. That he, Dude, he's like, got a 24 pant. It looks twenty. It, it looks. It's like a twenty. Dude, I'm not kidding you, man. Thirty-six because he's tall, man. But he's he's in Augusta. It's go time. That's a really cool story. Um, all right, more on the Masters throughout the week. It's going to be a fun week. We got CJ coming up. Leafs in action. Jays in action tonight. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app.